Hi, I'm Michael Hart, a senior software development engineer at AWS. In this video, I'll tell you how to optimize data ingestion paths into AWS IoT Sitewise using a new feature that allows cost efficient and scalable ingestion of time series data needed for analytical use cases. I'll tell you about how it works, then walk through a setup using material handling robots as an example. Before this new feature, customers could only ingest data in real time from their edge devices. In this instance, the robots are passing data to the Sitewise Edge gateway, which ingests that data directly into Sitewise in real time. Our customers wanted a more cost-effective ingestion route for analytical use cases where the data is not needed in real time. So we enabled buffered ingestion using Amazon S3. With buffered ingestion, customers can now buffer data at the edge before ingesting it into the cloud. Customers can lower their ingestion cost for data that is not needed in the cloud within milliseconds. For example, data needed for machine learning applications and BI analytics dashboards that only need to be updated every 15 minutes. In the console, this is possible by choosing the option AWS IoT Sitewise buffered using Amazon S3. Simply put, data is buffered using S3 and then bulk imported into Sitewise storage. What's more, the user has the choice of whether to delete the data from S3 afterwards or keep it to use with other services, such as Amazon SageMaker. This is made possible by new API calls for bulk importing data, which customers can also use. Please see the documentation in the description for more information about this option. The data is buffered in Parquet format, which is a more efficient and accessible format for other AWS services. For example, Amazon SageMaker can directly import Parquet data, allowing users to easily train machine learning models using data from their factory floor. What's more, you can choose which of these ingestion methods to use depending on the node path. You just need to deploy multiple data sources, each ingesting data from different node paths, and select the desired ingestion method and select the desired ingestion method for each. Let me show you. In our example, we have a fleet of mobile robots producing data that we want to use for different purposes. We have control systems running that tell the robot when to pick up a new package. We need to know in real time if the robot has a package. For this node path, we'll use the real-time ingestion method. We can select node paths that end in has package for this data source. Next, our data scientists want to be able to build a machine learning model of when the robots need to be maintained, and they believe motor temperatures are the key data. For this node path, we will buffer data into Amazon S3, but not ingest it into Sitewise. We don't need it in there. Our scientists can access it directly from S3. We can select node paths that have motors in the middle for this data source. Finally, we want to monitor the battery levels of our robots to determine when they should recharge, but we don't need the data in real time. We can wait for periodic data imports. For this node path, we will buffer data into Amazon S3, then bulk import it into Sitewise to save on costs. We can also choose whether we delete the data from S3 afterwards as it could potentially benefit our data scientists building the maintenance model. It just depends whether we're prepared to pay for it to be stored in two places for this potential benefit. We can select node paths that end in battery level for this data source. Therefore, overall, we have three data sources. One ingests package data in real time, one stores motor temperature data in S3, and one buffers battery data into S3 and then imports into Sitewise. Let's see how to set up these data sources. Here I have a Sitewise Edge gateway set up, ingesting data in real time from a simulated robot fleet. Currently it has one data source set up to ingest all data and will reconfigure this gateway to have the three data sources. Here we can see the data being ingested for robot one. The motor temperatures are there, the has package field, and the battery level measurement. Back in the gateway, we can see that there is currently one data source. It is configured to ingest all data in real time from the root node. 
we're going to modify this to only ingest has package data, then add two other data sources for the other data. I can rename this to package data source, keep the endpoint as it's the same, and set the node filter. We set the node path with a wildcard for the robot name and has package as the field name. We could use two stars here to mean any path that ends in has package. Your setup may be different. I'll save that data source and add a new data source. This data source will also be OPC UA. We will name it motor temperature data source. Paste in the endpoint from the other data source and set the node path to star motors star. And here's where we can see the new ingestion route. We can select buffered using Amazon S3, which pops up new configuration options. In this case, we want to untick ingest into sitewise because we only want this data in S3. I've already created an S3 bucket, so I'll paste the name in here. But all you would need to do is go to S3 and create a new bucket with your name and default permissions. That's all we need to do for this data source. Finally, our third OPC UA data source. We'll call this one battery level data source, paste in the endpoint, and set our node path to star battery level. This final route will also use buffered using Amazon S3. However, this time we'll keep it ticked on import data into sitewise storage. Now we can choose whether to delete after it's ingested, depending on whether we'll need the data for other purposes later. In this case, I'm going to untick the deletion. This gives me the option to add the data to the maintenance model, measure KPIs that don't need to be real time, such as downtime or health, or query with SQL for other use cases like root cause, like root cause analysis. Again, I'm going to paste the bucket name. This is really helpful because it keeps all of my historical data in the same repository, and I won't end up with different data silos. Each time we save, the data source will automatically trigger the redeployment. And that's all we need to do to configure our data sources. Now we just need to wait for the data to come in. Back in our Robot1 Sitewise asset, we can see live data coming in for has package, but our data for the battery level is lagging a couple of minutes behind. Let's wait a few minutes for that to update. We can see from the battery level latest value timestamp that the data has just been bulk imported, and we can see the latest value next to it. We can also check Sitewise Monitor for historical data. Here we can see in Sitewise Monitor the historical data for the battery level, so we have the same data as if it had come in in real time. This is the S3 bucket used for storing the OPC UA data. We can see within the folder year 2023, it's divided up by month and day, and within the latest day, our data is being stored in parquet format separated by folders to make lookup easier. This will contain our motor temperatures and battery data in one repository, ready to be used by other services. Overall, that is buffered ingestion, a new feature for AWS IoT Sitewise. We can choose to ingest data in real time or for more cost-effective data ingestion when it doesn't need to be real time, we can buffer with Amazon S3 and optionally bulk import into Sitewise. Data is buffered into S3 in parquet format to be more accessible to other services. This gives our customers flexibility and empowers them to optimize their ingestion costs. I hope you now have the information you need to start optimizing your data ingestion paths into Sitewise.